What's up guys, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's what the fitness time. And this week, our submission is from, Chino, is this from you? Boslav Raichev. Say what? <laughs> Whatever your name is, we appreciate you, even though I can't pronounce it, and hopefully you can hear Chino in the background. Chino has just texted me this video. The title is, Are All Calories the Same? Oh gee, I wonder what they're gonna talk about. I really hope this isn't very long. I'm guessing a, sorry guys, we got an ad. Wait, was that, was that another Super Troopers? It looks like it might be another Super Troopers. Oh. Can I go back and watch the ad again? I love Super Troopers. Four minutes, now I'm, I don't want to, okay, I'm gonna judge. Um, it's probably gonna be the same old straw man arguments, but let's see. Uh, Robert Lustig, The Hacking of the American Mind, his book pops up. Uh, it's the science behind corporate takeover of our bodies and brains. So Lustig is a medical doctor who believes that Sugar and fructose, and by extension, carbohydrate, are is what's making us fat and sick, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And by the way, there's always an element of conspiracy to these people's claims. It's the same playbook, and it, actually, it's funny. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, plant-based people, plant-based zealots, they use the same sort of logic. Insofar as, oh, there's this deep, dark secret that the government doesn't want you to know about and that industry has paid off all these people. And then also the low carbohydrate people use the same thing. So it's, it's pretty interesting that they're on opposing sides and literally use the same arguments. All right, that was 10 seconds in. Hopefully I can get through this a little bit quicker. A lot of obesity seems to hinge on this idea that we're overeating these hyper palatable, really delicious foods that are constantly available to us. At the end of the day, doesn't it come down to if we eat too much, we're going to gain weight, no matter no matter what the food is. So, this l lends itself to this notion that a calorie is a calorie; that it's all about the calories. You eat too much, you exercise too little. Therefore, it's about two behaviors: gluttony and sloth. Therefore, yeah. See, this is that right away a straw man argument: gluttony and sloth. So, calories in, calories out, and he's setting up the straw man that they are independent variables. They are not independent variables. They are dependent variables. Calories in affects calories out through adaptive thermogenesis and metabolic adaptation. Also, there's evidence that calories out can affect calories in, meaning if you exercise more, uh, your body will compensate by you eating more. There's an idea that your total daily energy expenditure is a little bit constrained, a lot of this stuff, but he's already setting up a fallacy, just, just, to, be, just to be clear. All calories are the same. All sources of calories are not the same. I'll explain more in a minute. That it's your fault. Therefore, it's not the company's fault, it's yours. That's where this comes from. The question is, is it true? Is a calorie a calorie? There are many reasons to think that that's not the case. Number one, obesity and diabetes are not the same. Turns out there are countries that are obese without being diabetic, such as Iceland, Mongolia, Micronesia, and there are countries that are diabetic without being obese, such as India, Pakistan, and China. In America, we are the most obese nation. We only have a 9.3% diabetes prevalence. India and China are yeah, better but than us. But Robert, if you look at the pre-diabetes numbers, they track extremely well with obesity. There's a lot of people who are obese, who are pre-diabetic, who aren't quite yet diabetic. Also, a lot of people with pre-diabetes who get put on type two diabetes medications that stave off them becoming type two diabetic. But I actually agree a little bit insofar as I think my personal opinion is that these two morbidities evolve in parallel together as a function of the same thing, which is too much energy and not enough oxidation of said energy. This causes accumulation of metabolic byproducts in the mitochondria, which inhibits a lot of different, these metabolites inhibit a lot of different reactions, which basically backs cellular metabolism up to the point where you have glucose 
uh, blood lipids, even amino acids becoming elevated in the blood because there's not enough flux through the mitochondria of the cell. Now, again, I could be completely wrong. That's my personal opinion. Now, that being said, if you become obese, if you become overweight, your adipose tissue secretes these things called adipokines, which actually may contribute to the development of further type two diabetes and complications. But they have an 11% diabetes prevalence. If obesity is the problem, if calories are the problem, then how do you explain that they have a higher diabetes prevalence than we do? In addition, if you look at the rate of increase- By the way, it was only a 2% difference. In America, turns out that the rate of increase for the obese population is exactly the same as the rate of increase for the normal weight population. If it were about obesity, wouldn't you expect the obese to be increasing their prevalence at a so greater- So once again, it's kind of a hand-waving argument. Type 2 diabetes is much, much, much more common amongst obese people than normal weight individuals. It's relatively rare for a normal weight, lean person to develop type 2 diabetes. Where are all the athletes with type 2 diabetes? And then when you look at years of life lost, it turns out that the years of life lost in the normal weight population due to sugar consumption are just as great as the years of life lost in the obese population due to sugar consumption. I'm not sure where he's getting this data from. He's not citing it. Um, I can't really address it because I'm not even sure this actually exists. If it were about obesity, you would expect it to be worse for the obese population. Bottom line, it's not about obesity. And we now have the data that shows why that's true. Why it's not about calories. Because a calorie is not a calorie. Because it's about insulin and insulin resistance. Insulin resistance of course being it is. the phenomenon where your insulin doesn't work well, so your pancreas has to make more and insulin drives all of those chronic metabolic diseases. The reason sugar is so pernicious and such a problem is not because the whole body metabolizes sugar, it's because the liver metabolizes sugar. And all of the sugar that you consume goes to the liver, and the liver has no choice but to turn that excess into liver fat. And it is that liver fat. <laughs> so. That is a very one-dimensional view of metabolism. Your liver can do a lot of shit with sugar, especially if you're not consuming too many calories. So we have randomized control trials looking at high sugar versus low sugar in overfeeding and dieting studies. And in fact, one study looked at over 100 grams of sugar intake per day versus 10 grams of sugar per day, calories and protein equated in a caloric deficit found that both groups lost the same amount of weight, lost the same amount of fat, and both groups' health markers improved. If it was just about sugar, wouldn't we expect drastically different results? Fat that causes the liver to not work well, to become insulin resistant, then the pancreas to make extra insulin to make the liver do its job, and that increased level of insulin drives the heart disease, ultimately, burns out the pancreas, causes the hypertension. And now we believe also drives cells to divide, potentially promoting cancer, and also has effects on the brain that we think lead to dementia. So, so if that was the case, we would expect to see higher rates of cancer in people who eat higher carbohydrate diets, even when calories are equated, and we don't see that in the meta-analyses. In fact, we find that people who eat like mostly a plant-based diet have lower rates of cancer. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have meat, that meat's gonna cause you to get cancer and all this kind of shit. Don't straw man my argument. But if carbohydrates were causing this, we would expect to see people who eat higher carbohydrate regardless of obesity, right? Because he just said that, and regardless of total caloric consumption, die of cancer more quickly. We don't see that. In fact, it's not about the calories, it's about the insulin response that those calories cause. And the insulin response is very specific to the food consumed. 
process for Please explain to me how something like whey protein and beef, which have similar insulin responses to white fucking bread, how come they're not cancerous? Or how come their calories aren't bad? I would like to see the mental gymnastics behind how you justify that. Food, because it's refined carbohydrate, because it's sugar laden, is the most egregious in terms of driving insulin, insulin resistance, and all of these chronic metabolic diseases. And that's what the industry is selling. So, real quick, he never actually addresses are all calories created equal. What he's trying to say is that all sources of calories may have differential impacts on disease. Okay, we'll play that game, fine. There's two separate arguments here. There is the obesity argument and there's the disease argument. He's wrong on both fronts, but on the obesity argument, uh, all calories are the same because a calorie is just a unit of energy. It's not a molecule, you can't look at it under a microscope, it's literally how much energy is contained in the chemical bonds of a food. Saying all calories aren't the same is like saying all dollar bills aren't the same, okay? A dollar bill is just a unit of currency, all right? If you take, I don't know, $100,000 and invest it in growth stock mutual funds, you will probably get more money back than you would if you spent it on, say, a sports car. Same token, if you eat 1,000 calories from mostly sugar and highly processed, hyperpalatable foods, you're not gonna get as much thermic effect of food or satiety as you would by eating higher protein and higher fiber foods. All calories are the same. All sources of calories are, do not have the same effect on energy expenditure. That's the obesity part. All sources of calories also may not have the same effect on disease. I agree, but if we're gonna pull the insulin argument, which by the way is pretty fucking weak, especially when you look at something, a drug like liraglutide, which they give to people, it's a GLP-1 mimetic, it increases insulin, they don't increase their calories, they increase their insulin and they lose weight and all of their blood markers of health improve. So if insulin was the primary driver of disease, how would giving something that increases insulin actually make people lose weight and become healthier? How, how can you, how does this, how can you rectify that in your mind, Robert? Uh, and again, there is the whole fact that protein produces an insulin response. Whey protein produces just as much insulin response as white bread. This is something they never touch on, which by the way, is not a big deal because insulin isn't inherently evil like he's trying to make it out to be. Yes, eating a lot of hyper palatable food is probably bad for you. And yes, different sources of calories may have differential impacts on disease. Saturated fat, for example, seems to increase LDL cholesterol and LDL cholesterol based on the Mendelian randomization studies we have, as well as a whole plethora of other evidence, seems to be causative for atherosclerosis. I'm probably gonna get a million people making logical fallacy arguments in my comments about why LDL cholesterol does not cause atherogenesis. The weight of the evidence suggests it does. And hey, I'm not saying you can't have saturated fat. In fact, I think some people can eat a low carb diet that's higher in saturated fat and improve their blood markers if they lose weight by doing it. If you're, if you're able to sustain that, fine. There's nothing wrong with a low carb diet as long as you understand the limitations. But if we're going to use this argument, then you also have to allow for the arguments about the other molecules from food that may have an impact on disease. <sighs> All right, guys. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you hated the video, click the links in the description and buy some of my stuff because I hate it when you do that. Catch you next week.